Well, hey there, fellow soldiers. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being a part of a growing community of cultural appropriators who absolutely positively refuse to give up, surrender, or be assimilated into the secular Borg. Resistance might be futile, but that's never stopped us before. So set your phasers to fun and beam up some learning. I'm Pastor Shane, and I'll be your Starfleet commander today as we appropriate some culture. Now you may be wondering, why all the Star Trek references? And it's because today is May the 4th, which is National Star Trek Day. I'm sorry? Obviously I have an earpiece and my producer is talking to me because I have a producer and I'm not just some weirdo talking to a camera in a room alone. Anyway, I've been informed that uh, May the 4th is actually National Star Wars Day. It's a pun. So happy Star Wars Day, everybody. I'm sorry. Yep. So apparently uh, today is May the 5th. Cinco de Mayo. Hey, happy Mexican Independence Day, everybody. What? Well, how is that a thing? Well, anybody can beat the French. Just ask the Germans. This program has gotten silly. But that's fitting because today is all about the importance of maturity. So last week we were thinking of the children. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? The central question was how do we properly protect and shield our kids from the harmful influences of culture while training them to live in the culture? And there's a lot there, but the key is to recognize the difference between inoculation and quarantine which we should all be pretty familiar with during this whole COVID pandemic. Sheltering in place is not a long-term solution. Eventually our kids grow up and will go out into the world, at which point the question is not going to be how well did you shelter them, but were they successfully inoculated? That's really the key, both for children and for us. But some Christians don't trust that, or even more common, are preoccupied with their public persona and the optics of the thing, and so they walk around like our president, while even though fully vaccinated, wears two masks, even on Zoom calls, when all the cool world leaders are maskless. Now don't get me wrong, as Christians we should be set apart, we just shouldn't be set apart for dumb reasons, and we too can virtue signal by the ways that we protect ourselves. But true virtue comes from within. There's not a mask in the world that's going to protect you from sin. We need to be immunized. And that starts with the Spirit of God, or what C.S. Lewis called the good infection. When we come to Christ in saving faith, God's Spirit dwells in us and we're brought to new life. And as we grow into that new life, we become more and more like Jesus. And being more and more like Jesus makes us more and more immune to sin. It's like a perpetual booster shot. If we want to safely live in the culture and not be corrupted by the culture, we need to grow to be more like Jesus. How do we do that? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. We have to train ourselves to be godly. God prescribes us spiritual disciplines to do in order to grow. Things like reading your Bible, being in prayer, giving and tithing, worshiping, fellowshipping with other believers in church, and serving one another. That is how we train ourselves to be godly. Consider it CrossFit training. I apologize. This episode really is as bad as water. Very different. Than Stop it. The point is, we work and God makes it grow. That's how we spiritually mature to become more like Christ. And the more mature we are, the more immune we are. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. We mature so that we're not tossed around by the world. Maturity means security. That's catchy. That's trademarked. Maturity means security. 
You know, we started this series off with the parable of the sower. Let's go back and take a look at that again. Luke chapter 8, verse 14. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. They do not mature. They were choked out by the world, by the culture. If we're going to endure, if we're going to stand firm, if we're going to produce a crop, we need to mature as Christians. We need to mature to endure life's worries, to endure life's riches and pleasures. That's a funny thing to say, enduring life's riches and pleasures, but it's so true. Life's comforts and pleasures can stifle our maturity. Have you ever watched Netflix so much that it actually stops autoplay and it asks you if you're okay? Yeah, me neither. But if you're looking to get lost in television but find community, then look no further than our sponsor today. Appropriating the Culture is brought to us by Trekkies. Mexican Trekkies. Totally saved. Get together with all your friend and boldly go to the Trekkie forums where you can design your own starship, learn Klingon, master finger dexterity, or countless other useless skills. Live long and prosper with fellow Trekkies on the Trekkie forums. Mexican Trekkies, nerding out since 1966. Alrighty, so what we have to realize as Christians is that there's nothing easier than to get swept up in the culture. The world loves darkness instead of light. The current of the culture is always going to be pushing us away from Jesus. So if you're not actively swimming toward him, then you are drifting away. That sounds like work, though. And it is. Maturity requires work and effort, and it's not always fun. Reading the Bible is not always fun. It's work at times. There are boring parts, not going to lie. Praying and meditating on God is not always fun. Sometimes it's mind-numbing. Giving is hard. Serving can be even harder. Going to church is not always fun. It's much easier just to sleep in. The sermons can be painful, except when I'm preaching, of course. And apropos of nothing, we can see when you're yawning, go to bed earlier. Anyway, the point is, these are spiritual disciplines, and spiritual disciplines require work. That's how we grow and mature. We have plenty of nominal Christians or cultural Christians and people who grew up in the church. But when the time of testing comes, they'll fall away. Because there's a big difference between growing up in the church and growing up in Christ. Now, ultimately, any transformation is going to come by the power of God. But we work, and God makes it grow. We work and God makes it grow. That's the deal. If we're going to live in and be able to weather the good and bad of life, we need to grow and mature in Christ. Listen to Romans. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. It's kind of an odd thing to say that character produces hope, but it's absolutely true because it's a sign of transformation. Just like when we train physically and exercise and see physical transformation, muscle growth and weight loss, it fills us with hope, right? It's working. It's working. Well, it's the same way with our spiritual training. When we see transformation of our character, when we see that we're becoming more and more like Christ and less and less like Tom Brady, it fills us with hope. It's working. It's working. You know, there was, a, there was a particular time I remember very distinctly in which I was wrestling with something in my heart, and I remember praying to God, God, I can't fix this in me. I can't change me, so you need to do it. And nothing immediately happened, but you press on and press on. You continue in the spiritual disciplines and the habits and grace, and then one day you look around and you go, whoa, I've changed. I've seen transformation. I've seen growth. And when you see the transformative effect of the Spirit in your life, it gives you hope about the truth of the gospel because the Spirit is a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. That's why maturity is security. Our maturity and growth testifies to the truth of Christianity, and we can be confident that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. But that does require work and diligence. As it says in Hebrews, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. We need to live in and we need to be good consumers in order to be good producers of art to shape the culture. But the only way to do that safely is by immunization. 
and that is achieved by becoming more like Christ through the spiritual disciplines and the habits of grace. If you try to live in without being grounded and tethered to God, then you will be swept away. Well, that'll do it for today. Follow me on the major socials at Miller on Twitter, Nathan Shane Miller on my Facebook authors page, or hit me up at NS Miller on Locals with all your questions or comments. See you next week, and in the meantime, viva mucho y prospera. Thank <laughs> you.